Hi, it's Will here from CSU Ontario. At a minimum, it would be laughable, and beyond that, probably hypocritical for me to offer any advice about how to manage time. So I think I'll just sit back and listen to the good words my colleagues have to say. Hi, this is Paige from Ontario, and the question we're looking at is, how do we manage time in undergraduate and postgraduate education? Here in Ontario, when we, we bring each candidate in for the uh, teacher education program and we interview them, one of the questions that we include is strategies that they're going to use to be able to manage practicum placement as well as a full course load at the same time because we, uh, we really stress to them right from the very beginning that it is a challenge to uh, be able to manage everything and so what strategies do you have in place and as a result we have through the school year people saying now we know why you asked us that question in the interview and then during our orientation week to uh, connect back to that question we spend time in a preparing for practicum session talking about the importance of being able to manage your time effectively and what are some ways that you can do that and how you can work with colleagues and be able to um, utilize the resources of the university to support them via through uh, peer tutor and some type of a learning skill support, counseling or talking with your lecturer and so on. So there's lots of strategies that we do try to embed in them that will then be career long as they move forward in the profession. Karen Callahan from Charleston, Ontario. There are some tensions for us around time in education because we talk with our students about untiming the curriculum so that we're not predicting how much time children would want to spend exploring anything. And when we talk about something with students, we'd like to try to live it as well so that we're not contradicting ourselves. But that's very difficult in a post-secondary environment where we have a detailed subject outline that is given on the first day of class that identifies what will happen each week for that semester. So we're still trying to do a little tap dance with, with our subject outlines and, and find um, an agreeable, amiable way to have it be a little bit, have some give and responsiveness, and at the same time have some organization. So I want to pick up on what Karen talked about and that whole notion of untiming the curriculum and the whole idea that um, time needs to be in the service of responsive pedagogy. Often we're in a position where pedagogy is in the service of time and the time constraints that we live by but resisting those through digitization, through building relationships, through changing the context of the ways that we do things by building community, we can untime that curriculum to some degree while recognizing that we still live within its confines. So I want to think about how we manage time in undergraduate and postgraduate courses from the perspective of wellness. Um, and from the point of view of how we as academic staff and our students seem to manage and cope with study, activities, readings, having to engage with others more than likely in my world virtually and what that does in those students to actually get them to get the job done. I am always constantly amazed by our postgraduate students and how they are able to cope with the many demands that we place on them academically by their choice to actually, you know, get the job done, cope in three or four different time zones, be present in a virtual environment that sometimes doesn't actually work. I think that we have a lot to learn from these people. I think we have a lot to learn with what they do every day, what they do squeezing in things before children wake up before they go off and do their daily chores for the day, before they engage with the rest of the world and the rest of the community. I think we, as academics, have a lot to learn, and I think we need to actually start listening to those demands when we think about postgraduate study and time. My name is Linda Charco, 
And I believe we manage time by being both respectful to the people we are working with and to ourselves. How do we build trust with each other? And how do we do that in a thoughtful way? So I know I can't do everything, and I know that they can't do everything. So how do we decide what can be learned, what can be taught, what can that inquiry be that leads to the most authentic learning possible? Um, hi there, it's Umar from Charles Sturt University in Burlington, Ontario. Uh, one of the questions that we're pondering about is how do we manage time in an undergraduate institution? Um, a couple years ago, there was one video that I watched with staff in one of our professional development. It was revealing about this thing about the boiled frog. And um, it, it resonated with me because the idea of time and our workloads, um, it, it's what Zeppi was saying. It's about wellness and being respectful to the needs of one's own body, but the family and friends that surround you. And um, um, usually, those are my constraints in terms of time. And with our workload in the terms of our research and our teaching practices, um, how I manage time is, uh, <laughs> uh, is I, I do things that, that I love and enjoy first. And I rely on my comrades and my colleagues to help with my scheduling and uh, reminding of reading emails or mm -hmm. um, putting posty notes or even having a schedule. So it's one of those combinations, being true to oneself and doing things you love, but also trying to look at one's own weaknesses and um, engage with the colleagues to help you in that in fulfilling other things to do at the university. That's it.